Welcome to labmiss.com and our lab video series on Cisco ASA SSL VPN. You can find a complete list of SSL VPN video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. Since this is our first lab videos in this lab video series, we are going to start with something that every SSL VPN deployment should have, which is a valid trusted certificate. Whether the certificate is issued by your internal CA or third-party CA. And this is to avoid our users having to encounter certificate warning when they're trying to access the SSL VPN. So in this video, we are going to show you how to manually generate a certificate signing request or CSR from the ASA itself and have it signed by our internal Windows 2008 CA and then import it back into the ASA so we can use that for our SSL VPN. Now for our lab topology, this is pretty much going to be our topology that we're going to be using for our entire lab video series. And the main devices that we're going to be spending the majority of our time configuring is our ASA right here in the middle, which is our firewall one. And then we have a couple of servers that we can use for, as far as our testing with our web server, our FTP, RDP, or even our uh, ICE 1.2 for radius servers. And then we also have two test machines that's connected uh, to the outside of the ASA, although it's not really a true internet, but it should be sufficient for us to test the VPN as if the connection is being made from the outside internet. Okay, well, as far as this lab is concerned, for a certificate generation and install, we're going to be using our ASA as well as our Windows 2008 right here. This is acting as our certificate authority server. Okay, at the IP of 172.16.32.40. And then we're just going to use one of this test machine to test our connection from the outside to see that cert that we installed in the ASA. All right, so let's get started with our lab configuration. So as a prerequisite, every time you have to deal with a certificate whether it's install or authentication. One of the things you want to check is your time sync between the device and your certificate authority server. So here on our firewall one, we're going to do show clock. Right here we have our NTP configure. You can see that the NTP is in sync status right now. But that's our clock. So let me bring up our CA server right here that I'm currently RDP into, and you can see that the time is pretty much in sync at this point, so we are good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is to generate a crypto key, although this is not mandatory, because at this point, most likely you already have a key generated. So if you do show crypto key, my public key RSA, you can see that right here we have our default RSA key already generated but for whatever reason for example if you want to generate a key for a different length then you can certainly create a separate crypto key that you want to dedicate just for the SSL VPN okay so that's what we're going to do here so we're going to go crypto key generate RSA and then this is going to be a general key and then you can put a label on that to make it unique and identifiable. So we're going to call this one LM underscore SSL key. And then you can specify the modulus of the length of the key. Okay, so here we're going to do 2048 for the key length. I came right back. And if you just do up arrow and do that show crypto key, my public key RSA command one more time, you can see right here our key that we just generate with the name that we can now use for our CSR generation. Okay, next we're gonna create our certificate signing request that we're gonna either sign internally or hand it over to our third-party CA to have them sign the CSR for you. So we're gonna create a crypto CA trust point. Okay, and then give it the name for the trust point. We're gonna call it LM SSL underscore VPN. For our enrollment method, it's going to be terminal, okay, instead of URL if you were to do a CEP. So we want to do it via terminal. And then for our FQDN, we want to be vpn.labminutes.com. Although in real life, you probably want that name to be less obvious, so people just can't randomly guess your VPN, uh, SSL VPN URL, but for our lab purposes, that should be okay. So now for subject name, it's going to be CN equal labminutes.com and then OU equal IT. Again, you probably need to kind of look up the format of different certificate attributes for this and make sure they are correct and valid. Now for our O, which is organization. 
go lap minutes, and then for country, you're just going to go US. Okay. Next, we're going to tell the trust point to use the key pair that we just generated. So key pair, our key pair name, our key name is LL, uh, LM SSL underscore key. Looks like I misspelled the command earlier when I generated the key. So let me do that key generation again real quick right there. Sort of my bad. So let's do that. There you go. That came right back. Let me get back under the trust point and reattach the key pair. Okay, I might as well take this opportunity to show you how to delete the key that you have generated. So let's do a show crypto key my public key RSA one more time. Okay, so let's say we want to get rid of that key that we accidentally create. The command is crypto key zero rise RSA and then you can give it a label. Okay. Yes, and that key should now be deleted. All right. I didn't expect to show you that, but I'm glad that I did. So now that we have the crypto uh, trust point, so let's uh, do a quick show run command, show crypto CA trust point. So here's the command that we have so far. One thing I want to make a quick note of, if you get back under the trust point and do a question mark, you can see that what you can define as part of the certificate signing request is rather limiting. So for example, if you were to want to include a attribute like subject alternative name or SAND as part of your certificate, which is usually required if you were to do like a wildcard certificate that you want to generate and you can use it on the multiple ASA. It doesn't seem like you can do it right here. So that means you're going to have to resort to a separate tool like an open SSL to generate the CSR for you. And that's just, I want to make a quick note for that. Okay. Now to generate the CSR, we use the command crypto CA enroll and then we give it the trust point name which is lm ssl vpn okay so do you want to continue with the enrollment said yes do you want to include the device serial number let's say no and then we want to display that to the terminal okay and here is the base 64 output of our csr and now if you were to use the third party ca then this is what you're going to be submitting to them through their website to have the CSR sign. But for us, we're using our own Windows 2008 CA. So let me hop onto our CA server and then go to localhost underscore CERTSRV. All right. And then we're going to click request certificate. And then we're going to do advanced certificate request. And we want to submit the certificate using our base 64 encoded right here. And what we can do is just copy and then paste that into a box here. And then for our certificate template, we can just select a web server, which works for the most part, and then submit. Okay, and here is our signed certificate. We want it to be a base 64 encoded format. So let's go ahead and download that. So download certificate, and we're just going to save it for now onto our desktop right here. And let's call this one cert.cer or actually rather let's call it SSL VPN cert and then save. And it's usually also a good idea to install the root certificate on the, the trust point as well. So here since it's our root CA we can just go ahead and download the root CA certificate right here going back to the local SAS cert SRV, download a CA certificate, and then again, make sure you select base 64, otherwise it won't be so much readable. And then download certificate and save as, and just set it on desktop, which is going to call this uh, root CA. Okay, and if you were to again use a third party uh, CA, then usually they'll make their public uh, root certificate available on the website, so you can usually just uh, Google for that. Okay, so let's first Go ahead and install uh, root CA. So you can open that inside a notepad. So this is a base 64. Then coming back to a firewall one, the command to install the CA cert on 
Now trust point is crypto CA uh, authenticate. And then the name of our touch point, which is LM SSL VPN. I keep typing SLL for some reason. So SSL VPN. Okay, and then we just go ahead and copy and paste. Make sure I'm not pasting that. So copy one more time and then paste. And then quit. All right. You can double verify and make sure the fingerprint match to what's supposed to be the CA cert. We're just going to go ahead and say yes. That's good. So now the certificate of the CA cert has been successfully imported. Okay, next we need to import the identity certificate itself for SSL VPNs. Before we do that, let's double click and take a quick look right here. So the cert has been issued to vpn.labmits.com by our LM root CA with the date and expiration. And here under the detail, you can look at all this and verify, make sure they look correct. Now for the subject name, it looks just like how we define it, the trust point, OU equal IT, organization lab minutes, country is US. Okay, and the public key, RSA key length is 2048. Okay, so all that looks good. Let me right click and then again open with Notepad since uh, we save it as base64 format also. Now we could go ahead and install that on our trust point with the command crypto CA import. Name of the trust point LM SSL VPN. And then if you do question mark, you can see there are two options right here. Since we use the ASA to generate the CSR, the private keys and everything is restored in the ASA and all we need to import is certificate. But if you were to generate the CSR off box using the OpenSSL, for example, then you would need to kind of bundle up the file that includes the private key, public key, or public certificate, as well as the CA root certificate into a format called PKCS12, or a also known as .pfx, and then you can import it, the whole thing into the trust point. Okay, but for us, it's going to be certificate. Say yes, and then make sure we copy that and paste. Okay, again, quit. And now to verify that everything has been installed and imported correctly, you can do show crypto CA certificate. So you can see that the first certificate that we see is our own identity certificate that we just imported, cn equal vpn.latmins.com. And then followed by the self-signed root CA that we installed earlier. All right, so now that the ASA contains a certificate that we can use, we're going to have to tell the ASA to use that using the SSL command. You can see here there's an option for a trust point. So you identify which trust point you want the ASA to use. And that would be SS, uh, LMSSL VPN. It's very nice that it's so when you do a question mark, it actually came up with the trust point name that you already have. So you can just tap for that. Enter. Another command that, although not so much relevant to what we're doing, but I also recommend that you do, which is the SSL encryption command, and that's to define what kind of encryptions that is allowed when the SSL tunnel is built. So you want to make sure that you start with the most secure, which is the from what I see in the list here is a, a AES256 SHA-1 and then followed by the next best thing which is AES128 and well that's might as well allow triple desk and SHA-1 as a last resort okay but nothing lower than that okay let's do sure on SSL you can see those two commands right there and now just to enable the SSL VPN you need to get, get under the web VPN and then you can see all this command, which we'll go through more extensively later on in this video series. But just to simply enable the SSL VPN, all we need to do is type enable. And the interface that you want the SSL VPN to be enabled in this case is outside. Okay, and then the little informational message right here. It said but VPN and DTLS are now enabled on the outside. So next we're going to go ahead and test the certificate we just installed and make sure that is being used. I'm going to bring up, let me actually quickly show back the, the diagram right here. So I'm going to hop onto this Win7 non-corp machine that's sitting on the outside of the ASA. Okay, 
which is this guy right here. And then let's first make sure that I can ping the outside of the ASA. So ping 192.168.10.252, I believe. It's right here, .252. Okay, so you can see that's pingable. So now I'm going to bring up Internet Explorer. And also just an FYI, I already have the root CA certificate kind of installed on this machine already. So, so I can show you that real quick. So you know that this machine has already uh, trusted our root CA. Okay, let's uh, not do that right now. And we can go ahead and type HTTPS 192.168.10.252. Okay, it's giving the assert warning because I'm not accessing it by the name actually. Let me show that. I also have a host to IP uh, mapping created on the host file on this particular machine just for our testing purposes. So if I do a ping vpn.laminates.com you can see that it's being resolved to our outside IP of the ASA. So now this time if I actually go to https vpn.laminates.com then you can see that I can successfully access the login page without any certificate warning. Okay, I think my MMC or just came up. So right here under the, I believe it should be under here, trusted uh, root certificate authority. Right here is how I'll name root CA that I have installed previously. Okay, since the root CA certificate, the sign out ASA certificate is trusted, then me being a user is not encountering the certificate warning. Okay, and just to double verify, you can click on that little padlock icon and do a view certificates. You can see this is the exact same certificate that we saw earlier. Okay, issue to vn.labmins.com. And the last thing I kind of forgot to mention, so going back to where you get your CSR sign, the certificate that you get back from your, if it happens to be a third party certificate, it might not be a, a as far as a straight up uh, download and have it in the BS64 uh, from their website. It sometimes gives you in a different format and you may even need to use the program like Open itself to kind of break them up to separate, whether it's the certificate from their uh, root certificates. But other than that, just make sure that the certificate that you have is in the base 64 format. Okay, so that should wraps up our video on SSL VPN with ASA certificate install. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.